My friends, blessings to you today as we come to celebrate another day of thanksgiving. Amen to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his blessings to us, for saving our lives to see another day and to worship him because he is worthy of the praise, worthy of the worship. Praise God. Amen. And we want to talk about sacrifice today. Not just the sacrifice that God ordered the children of Israel to make, but the sacrifice he ordered. And more importantly for us, amen, not more importantly in terms of degree, his and the sacrifice he ordered, but for us today that we should offer ourselves a sacrifice, amen, because we want to dedicate our lives completely to him. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your righteousness, your truth, your blessings, your power. Grant us, Lord Jesus Christ, a desire to love you more and to live according to your will. We honor you this day. We give you praise for the joy and the peace that you give to us. Lord God, no one else could have done it but you. And we glory in your name, glory in your love, glory in your sacrifice. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. And again, we want to welcome all our friends out there in YouTube land and through this medium that God has provided us, amen, through man's knowledge, intelligence, and skill, that we can reach so many people. And we want you, our friends, to be part of this, be partners in spreading the word. Tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. You who have been baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, you know what it is, amen, to be blessed by the Lord. And those of you who are just tuning in and don't know anything about the Lord, but you just happen to be scrolling from one place to another and you happen to come upon this amen bible study amen what we want to do is tell you about jesus that is basically it amen that, that you must make a calling you're calling an election show that you want to tune in to see who is this person we're talking about and what has he done for us amen we know we don't take for granted that everyone has heard about the lord jesus christ and so many people maybe on YouTube or just on the internet, fishing, so to speak. And thank God you have happened upon this particular broadcast, this particular Bible study. And we certainly hope that you will watch others too, to know more about the Lord. So I just want to read Leviticus chapter 1, from verse 1 to 2. And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. And if, and I go to verse 3, and if the burnt offering is sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish, he shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. So what we notice here is that right after the tabernacle was built on the strict design of God, and we see how beautifully it was done, how intricately it was designed, and we see how God inspired men to build and make certain things. Amen. We notice that the Lord now pushes Moses, so to speak, and uh, that word is probably used lo loosely. He now instructs Moses that people should offer sacrifices. Amen. So we notice that after the tabernacle was erected, we see the Lord fill the tabernacle with such um, glory, such ex beautiful presence. Amen. It was such that the glory came down. Moses could not go in there. The priest stood by. But eventually, we see the manifestation of the glory of Jehovah. The voice of God spoke to Moses out of the cloud, this glorious cloud, and he told him what to do. Amen. In terms of these burnt offerings, praise God. And as we look at it, <clears throat> we notice too that it was a privilege that man could have communicated with God through sacrifice. Amen. And here we see it's a substitutionary uh, sacrifice or the animal that was offered in his stead. And we realize that blood was essential for the removal of sin. 
We see that from the Garden of Eden and we see that through the instructions of offering sacrifice that the sacrifice should be killed. It should be without blemish. It should be pure. Amen. So we see also that the only thing that would supply the demands of God, amen, of sons of man for the guilty before God is the shedding of blood. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. Amen. The substitutionary sacrifices, as we see here, um, instituted by God for man under the law, suffice so long as man continued to bring these sacrifices of blood to the tabernacle. Praise God. Amen. It being the blood of an animal that could never really fully take away sin. Amen. It didn't really meet the complete demands of God for the sins of man. And the best that man could do is to push it further on until Jesus came and offered himself a sacrifice. Amen. So notice here that the beast to be offered must be without blemish. Praise God. And we see that in Jesus Christ. This, significant, this is significant in the strength and purity. Amen. That we see in Christ. And the holy life that should be in his people without blemish. Praise God. The owner himself. Notice the owner must offer the sacrifice. Praise God. Here it is that it is done in a very special way. And he had to be doing it voluntarily. What we notice is that Christ himself, what did he do? He voluntarily gave his life a sacrifice for us. Praise God. Amen. And it must be offered at the door of the ta tabernacle where we see the brazen altar and the bird offering stood. which sanctify the gift and he must offer it. Amen. As one unworthy to enter. My God, only the holiest of holies. Amen. Only the high priest basically could go into the holiest of holies. Amen. He had to do it after he made a sacrifice for himself. Because man, no matter who he was, whether the high priest or one of the priests or anyone, even Moses. Amen. We all sinned and came short of the glory of God. And we notice that they had to do that. This offer must be done in order for their sins to be removed. And that is important in our lives. Amen. The sacrifice was to be killed before the Lord in an orderly manner and to honor God. It is significant also that in Christians, the flesh must be crucified with the corrupt affections and lust. Amen. So the priest had to sprinkle the blood. Amen. That's important. And another thing is that the beast would be divided into several parts to be burned at the altar. So here we find that this too suggested the sharp suffering of Christ. Amen. Christians must offer themselves their whole spirit, soul, and body. That's important. So we are making the correlation between that sacrifice that was done then and Christ giving his life, and for us as Christians. And we are going to look even at Romans chapter 12, how then Paul makes that particular comparison or makes that, um, what we would call, he's beseeching us, he's asking us to commit ourselves to a sacrifice. Amen. So when all this was done, it came as a sweet-smelling Savior. Amen. So it was an act of obedience to the divine command to give one's life, to give the animal up as such. Amen. So we are confronted with a need to sacrifice ourselves to the Lord. And I want to look at what um, Romans chapter 12 is saying to us as children of God. Paul is saying here, I beseech you therefore, brethren, Romans chapter 12, one, two, three. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
Praise God. Amen. And he said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what is that good and acceptable will of the Lord. So it is a decisive dedication that we're making. Paul is saying, after looking from Romans 1 to 11, what God, <clears throat> through his son Jesus Christ, had done for us, it is only reasonable. It is only appropriate. It is only the right thing for us to do to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. So we notice, too, that Christ gave his life completely. And here we are, if we're offering ourselves as living sacrifices, it is a complete giving over our lives, our being unto the Lord Jesus Christ. That what we do from day to day, amen, talks about this, the consecration, amen, the desire to be holy, the desire to live a righteous life. And notice what he says here, amen. He says that it is not going to be our approval. He said, presented by but it as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It is not necessarily unto the pastor, the apostle, the bishop, the mother of the church, the first lady, or whatever, but unto God. So he knows precisely whether or not that is some sacrifice that is just half uh, presented, halfway presented. It is no dedication. It is not complete in his um total giving over to God. Amen. So here we find that Christ himself as the sacrifice, Christ himself as the sweet smelling Savior, Christ himself who gave his life voluntarily, amen, without spot, without blemish, amen, pure, amen. No wonder Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Praise God. So here's this man who is supposed to sanction or say, well, he ought to be killed. He said, no, I find no fault in him. Not that he had the power to stop everything, but here he is making an assessment of what he sees and what he understands. Praise God. So we ought to be ready ourselves to live a life of holiness, completely set apart for God, holy, Holiness unto the Lord, which is a watchword and song. And this holiness is not something that we arrange. It is not something that we theorize about. It is what God expects us. He is a communicable part of his relationship. So he can commute this, communicate this holiness. He can give this holiness unto us. Amen. Through the Holy Ghost. Remember now, there are certain things that can't be transferred to us. His perfection. Amen. His omnipotence. His omniscience. Amen. Omnipresence. All these things, you know. But here he says, be holy, for I am holy. It suggests, therefore, that it is possible for us to live a holy and righteous life. Amen. So when he suffered, he suffered for us. So we know that we are going to go through some things. Now, uh, here, and here is a practical part of a Christian life. Here's a practical part of our relationship with God. Praise him. Yeah, when we figure out the theological and all that, but here are, are we going to make this relationship practical because we must be so concerned about our life totally given over to him. Amen. Offering ourselves, Lord, take me, use me as I am. Amen. I want to be used by you. Now notice what he says here in Paul in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. So here it is that he is demonstrated that I live this life. You know, he is my life. And I am conscious of what I do, how I say things, where I go, my relationship with others. Because Christ himself willingly gave himself, hallelujah, a sacrifice for us. And remember, because 
Every year, as as the Hebrew uh, writer says, blood of goats and of bulls could not take away sin because it could make the comers there perfect. Amen. As soon as they offer the sacrifice, one would be committing his um, uh, neighbor's wife or his neighbor's animal. No, but once Christ gave himself, there was no need for any more sacrifice. Praise God. And how beautiful it is that he could do that for our sake. And think about it. What is this relationship between God and man? That he would leave. This was heaven's best coming down. Amen. Being born, hallelujah, of a virgin Mary to relieve us to redeem us, to bring us back into a complete relationship with him. It took blood. It took sacrifice. It took a total giving up. It wasn't that saying, well, I'm going to just give my hand and that, but the whole, everything. Amen. And we can see how excruciating it was when he cried out. Amen. In that God, it was not a matter of just try to make noise. It was a human part of him realizing the trauma he was going to go through, realizing the depth of the sacrifice. Praise God. The nail prints were real. The thorn as the head were in there. The beatings. I mean, it was so excruciating. That was real. And he knew it. Hallelujah. But he decided to die that we might live. Hallelujah. So it is only reasonable. That we give him our lives. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. What are you doing with your life today? You have to decide that you're going to do it. Amen. He realized that, well, this is something that must be done. If that had not been done, then we would all be wallowing in sin today. No hope. Hallelujah. And remember, when they offer the sacrifice, as someone said, it wasn't some animal that they picked up on the side of the road. This was the best of the flock. Praise God. This was the purest of the flock that he was giving to God. Amen. Amen. It was not. So here we find that it was not just a man, but it was a God of glory. Amen. In the form of Jesus Christ, the flesh that was the heaven's best. Amen. So we must consider our sacrifice, it is acceptable because we are giving it to him. Paul says, it is a reasonable thing to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So here we find that um, if we have to understand how God wants us to live a life of holiness. And it's not just that he is demanding that from us, but he gives us the power to do it. He makes available all the resources to give, to, to do that. So once we give our lives completely to him, his holiness, his grace, his mercy, amen, the Holy Ghost himself will give us that impetus, will help us to guide us. He said, he'll lead you and guide us into all truth. He said, you shall receive power, power to live that holy life, power to focus on him, power to make that practical offering unto him hallelujah power to live above sin power to be so steadfast and unmovable aim as we go from day to day because every day we're challenged to live a life of holiness every day we're challenged about the sacrifice and i can imagine from the moment christ was born amen every step he took from that baby stage right to the last step before they hoisted him on that Three was focused on Calvary, was focused on the ordeal, was focused on the treacherous situation he had to go through for our redemption. But he was focused nonetheless. He was in every way pointing there. And we can see even as the devil tried to thwart our redemption by the temptations Glory to God. He stood fast because he knew he had to die, amen, to relieve us of sin. He had to die to bring us into a better relationship with him. He had to die, amen, to shed his blood, praise God, amen, for our salvation. This was not a blood bag that they were drawing some blood from him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No. 
when they pierced the side, blood and water came through, birthing that church, birthing our redemption, birthing our life, birthing our future. Praise God in him. Amen. And Paul is looking at us. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I am asking to commit yourself, set yourselves apart, that God may use you to his glory. And it's so important that when we do that, we find that he is so willing to take us through. Amen. Present your bodies. I know this too. When that sacrifice was put on the altar, it is not a situation where uh, they would go back and take a leg to cook for the dinner for the family. It was not a situation where they would say, oh, let me put this um, here to give someone else. Everything was given them. In a sense, burned completely, completely given up. Praise God. So it is a sense that we are putting ourselves there. And Lord, use me in your way. That's why Paul is saying, you know, you know, I am crucified with Christ. Yeah. Nevertheless, I live. So here it is that in living, we are that constant sacrifice. In living, we are making ourselves available to the Lord. We want to dedicate our lives to his work. It's pleasing. Amen. And you know something? Once we do that, we understand. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. One cannot serve what? Two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other. Praise God. So we have to be focused on one. And that one is Christ himself. We have to avoid those things that will easily beset us. We have to avoid those things that will trap us. Amen. We have to resist the enemy because and that he will flee from us. Praise God. And remember, if he could tempt Jesus, who are we that we would ever fall short of that temptation also? Amen. Every day he's at our heels. Every day he's trying to pull us down. But we have to keep steadfast in his word, believing in his power, believing that truly if we just give up every day, Amen. He'll keep us. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Somewhere says, Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will grow straight to dim in the light of his glory and grace. And I'm not standing here to tell you that some temptations will come. I mean, pull some of us down, pull me down. Amen. Back into the gutter. But the grace of God is greater than our sins. Hallelujah. Thank him that he's always thinking about us, always going to pull us up. Amen. Like that prodigal son, the moment we come to ourselves, that great father, that great redeemer is there waiting for us. Glory to God. And you know something? The beautiful thing about God is not that after he forgives us, he can't forget. He can do it. I mean, but he chooses not to. He has a capacity to forget it. And the sin is just behind him. He's not going to be mingling with that sin and our change of heart, our change of desire. Look at it. The father took that son in. I don't want to hear about what happened out there. This my son that was lost is back. Yes, 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 yes. We have come back to the fold, come back to the household. So we want to stay there in the arms of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to surrender completely to him. Amen. Giving our lives 100% to his service. Yes, 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 yes. I want to live the way you want me to live, the songwriter says. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Glory to God, because it is important that we commit ourselves, our lives, and our service to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we don't want to be serving two masters. You know, think about it. Um, sometimes we have jobs, two, three jobs, and we get so stressed out <laughs> that we probably don't even know which one we are sometimes. Praise the Lord. So stressed out physically. Glory to God. Think about that. But God wants us to focus on him. And why does he want us to focus on it? Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. 
Not only that, if we decide that we're going to focus on him, he can provide all that we need. The writer says, all that I need is in Jesus, for he satisfies and with joy he supplies. Paul says, I beg you, I beseech you, I encourage you. Amen. Give yourselves completely to the Lord. It's a reasonable thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep yourself focused. Don't go back on the altar. Take yourself out. Throw yourself back into the gutter. Throw yourself back into hellfire. No. Stay there. I know sometimes it might be a little rough. Amen. Remember, fire is burning. Praise God. And when fire catches you, sometimes you're flashing. Hallelujah. You are there. But look, these fires are just the things to test us. Guess what happened? When the, 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 the goldsmith puts the the gold or he puts the, the the material, amen, into the fire, it is not to burn it, it's to make it malleable so he can shape it into what he wants it to be. And when you come out of that fire, you are really pure. You, you see the man burnishing that thing and polishing it up and it's so it looks so great the final product amen is nothing to be compared with a big clump of something looking like dirt or rock that he started with but look at it look how god cleans us up look how he changes us up amen look sometimes the fire we go through this fire furnace is not to destroy us but to make us perfect is to make us whole so you have to stay there Glory to God when the fire burns. Stay there when you feel something that's pulling you. Glory to God. God is doing that to make you whole. Hallelujah. He wants to present us. Don't try to look on the other side because look, let me tell you something. There are only two choices, God and the devil. And I say that often. I read that so often that he has no interest with our lives. Nothing about our lives that you know, is of any interest to him in a sense of he has no interest in our well-being, in our spiritual life, in our education, in our financial life, in our married life. Amen. All he wants to do is break it up. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No, that's why Paul say, um, I am could yet I live, I live. But it's, who is living with me? The Christ that's living in me. Yes, but Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. One wants to kill, one wants to give you life. Amen. So we want to focus on the one that wants to give us life. And not just wants to give us life, but has given us life. Hallelujah. And the life we live is now in him. No wonder Paul said, he is my life. Glory to God. Nothing else. Not my profession. Not my money. He is my life. Whatever he wants me to do. No one. The songwriter said, Jesus, use me. And oh, Lord, don't refuse me. For surely there's a work that I can do. And even though it's humble, Lord, help my will to crumble. Glory to God. Look at what you have done for me. The least that I can do is to present my body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service. Amen. And in Matthew 22, 37, it says, one must love the Lord with all his heart. Again, it's a focus. Glory to God. You can't be giving the enemy a part of it. Glory to God. And next thing, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. We can't do that. That's not the way it goes. Amen. We have to be steadfast. In the work and the will of the Lord. Be ready to answer to every man that asketh us a reason of the hope that is in us with meekness and fear. It is the Christ that is giving us hope. Praise Him. Glory to God. And you know, if you look at Luke chapter 14, verse 20, we must turn our back on friends and family to completely walk with God. My God, my God, my God. That's a tough one. But guess what happens? It is God's will. Praise the Lord. He makes provision for us. He is going to take care of us. We're not talking about dumping 
your family, dumping your mother, your father. Amen. But who is more important or the most important in our lives? The Lord Jesus. We have given ourselves completely over to him. So he wants to keep us. Amen. He wants to strengthen us. Amen. And if you look at the other verses, there are certain people who will not make it through. And we don't want to be numbered among them. Verse 5, for this we know that no whoremongers, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an adulterer hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So we don't want to just go through rituals. This is not what it's all about. It's a deep-seated commitment that God is going to be my guide, that I give myself, hallelujah to him, yes, completely. Amen. Not a shred is going to any other source but to God. Amen. No, we don't want to be like the foolish virgins. My God. Amen. At the last minute, we realize that we are lacking in so many things. We want to be doing that steadfastly. Amen. Living in a manner that when that we are awake, praise God, and we hear the cry, the midnight cry, awake. We don't want to be in a sleeping thing. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. I know there's a political movement about the woke. And I remember one um, anchor person, <laughs> I think it was Whoopi Goldberg, who said, I was, we, I was never woke. I was always, amen, right up there. I was alive and ready. Amen. Constantly looking at what was going on. Amen. I was never asleep. I'm sorry, she said. I was never asleep. I was awoke. Amen. Amen. Considering what was going on. So here we think of the political spectrum and the sociological thing, but we want to talk about God. We are awake and ready. Awake, not sleeping. Awake, not slumbering. Amen. You we want to be people who are walking in the day, observing, seeing, and knowing what it is because we are dedicated to what is righteous in the sight of the Lord. Amen. So uh, we want to consider that the sacrifice that God ordered Moses to tell the people to offer, amen, without blemish, they had to do it willingly, praise God. You notice Christ offered himself willingly, yes, for our salvation. Paul is saying, you must do it, present your bodies willingly, amen. And, you know, no one is going to cut you, throw, put us on the altar and cut us up. No, no, no. Willing to live for him. Willing to serve him. Glory to God. He's calling us to love him. No wonder the writer, the somewhere I say, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Amen. Because what? He has done so much for us that we cannot tell it all. I'm serious. Look. Who has done anything near, amen, in equality and equality, amen, for us, for our benefit, for our life as Jesus Christ? No one else. It's a matter of life, not just some piecemeal gifts, amen. He gives us the Holy Ghost. Look at what he's doing for us. I, no, you know, no wonder, um... David said, when he considered the heavens and all that, he wondered, what is man that thou art mindful of him? I mean, look at it. You think about the galaxy, all the, you, the whole thing up there, everything. Earth is just like a speck. Look how far it is from the sun. Look at all these things. God, but yet he condescends to come into our lives to bring us back in a relationship with him. And from the moment man sinned, it was blood, 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 blood. Amen unto Jesus. Here we are today rejoicing in a full and free salvation. So, it is not 5%, 10%, it's 100%. Amen. Holy and acceptable. And remember, it is not qualified by ourselves or by friends or by mother or by father, or by husband, or by the pastor, or any such. No, no, no. It is qualified by the Lord, which, you know, it is unto God, which he makes the um, determination 
as to whether or not it is fully done. And remember, that means that we have to be just true to what we're doing. You know what I mean? It's a matter of completely giving over to him. And remember, it is not a matter of show and tell. It is that he knows, he sees in our hearts, our minds, he knows what we're doing. So we see that we are dealing with a God we cannot fool. And the best thing to do, as an evangelist usually says, show your hand. <laughs> this is it, Lord. Amen. This is it, Lord. Amen. Use me. I am completely devoted and given over to your service. Amen. My God, my God, my God. So Paul was making a real plea to us, a real plea, amen, that we should do this for our own benefit. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Our own benefit, not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what is that good. I come back to it. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Glory to God, let us look to Jesus, that what we do, he will see it as acceptable. Glory to God, he'll see it as perfect. Amen. Notice his life was acceptable. It was perfect. Glory to God. So we today should make sure that it is acceptable. Amen. No blemish, no half-hearted presentation. Nothing, amen, that is flawed. Nothing that is so tarnished. Nothing that is so badly presented, botched up. No, it is totally pure, totally given over to him. Glory to God. I want to be used by you. I want to be kept by you. Praise God. Oh, we thank God for that today. Let us continue to offer ourselves a sacrifice until it calls us home. Father, we thank you. We give you glory for your mercy and your righteousness. We honor you today for your love. God, so many times as we try to make a move on a daily basis, so many things come, Lord Jesus Christ, to thwart that plan, to throw us off, amen, to pull ourselves from that altar of sacrifice. Oh, but the writer asked the question, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your all does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as we yield our body and soul. Lord, help us to do that this day. From this day on, glory to God that you may find it truly, amen, right and bless us. Have your way in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God.